Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. This video is a summary of the video I did yesterday, the live session on the hip sciatica, side bending, pain, tightness right here, abdominal, groin, psoas, pain, tightness, lower back pain, SIJ problems, especially in women post babies, but men can get this too. A lot more women commented on this problem when I did the video early on this year, it went completely nuts. So many, millions in fact, have messaged about this pain. Thank you so much to everyone and all your comments. I did a video yesterday, a live session on this pain because of the volume of people commenting and asking questions and messaging. Sadly, we had a technical error, something went wrong, the video lost sound during it. So I thought I'd do a summary of what I talked about yesterday. So this will be a longer video for Instagram again, so I hope you don't mind, but it'll be well worth it. The glutes, sciatic nerve, lower back pain, all this stuff here, what we'll do is I'm going to put it into categories like I did yesterday. The first part, how do you get it? The diagnosis that you were given. Second part, treatment treatment. What can you do so you can fix it? And thirdly, exercises. I commented on exercises giving tips for this pain to manage it better, manage it easier. All right, first part, how did you do this? Your glutes, your glutes went to sleep. Your glutes developed nerve locks, what I talk about all the time in the nervous system here. How did it do that? It was traumatized. Traumatized could be a single event. Trauma can be multiple events. Trauma could be micro events. For example, sitting too long, sitting as a job. You normally are a standing person, job, and then you went to a sedentary role in sitting a lot. You have a lot more stress, emotional stress in your life during that time as well. Uh, you drive a lot, you fly a lot. You went on a holiday, a driving holiday for multiple, multiple hours. You did a lot of trips worldwide and slept in different beds, traveling in planes again, did lots and lots of walking. You had a fall, you had an accident, you had an injury. Did you have a lumbar spine, something, lower back injury? Did you have hip bursitis, a real one, a real hip bursitis? And I'll talk about that in a moment where it was burning. You had to have some injections. It helped a little. But wow, something then ignited afterwards in this area. You had a baby or multiple babies. There it is, hip suddenly, whether you're athletic or not, for some reason, the hip pain started and it hasn't gone away. This pain becomes very chronic. Despite all the efforts that you do, it becomes very chronic. I meet so many people, months, years. I had one even this week, 20 odd years of this pain. It is mind blowing how it hangs around. And the reason why it does that is because of nerve that lock. Nerve locks is my terminology. I created a book that I've just recently finished on nerve locks and why they happen. It's because of trauma, physical and emotional. The diagnosis that you were given for this hip, non-specific low back pain, SIJ problems, sciatica. That's a tricky one because for me, sciatica is just a symptom. The sciatic nerve comes out of your lumbar spine, sacral spine, it bundles up together into one single nerve and then it travels down your leg, but it goes through your glute muscles, through your hamstrings and down into your leg. Sciatica is a symptom of something that's annoying that nerve and the annoyance could come from different sources. So you just can't say sciatica being your diagnosis. Sciatica is an umbrella symptom for specific problems, dysfunctions that, or issues, you know, structurally or nerve locks that can cause the sciatic symptoms in your glutes, back, groin, tummy, in your leg, numbness, burning, etc. So treat, uh, sorry, let's talk about diagnosis. Your pain can sit here, you can sit in your back, SIJ, it can go into your groin, groin muscles, it can burn down the outside of your leg. The outside of your leg can burn down all the way to the knee. It can go into your hamstrings, your calves, your foot can go numb. It is crazy, just crazy. And it stays, it just stays. No matter what you try, you try to exercise, it doesn't get better. You try all treatments, it doesn't get better. So diagnostically, those are the terminology that you get. A common one also is hip bursitis. People get hip bursitis diagnosed. For me, hip bursitis, what the nerve lock treatment does that I design 
it definitely tells you, definitely tells you that your hip bursa is annoyed and inflamed. Otherwise, the pain is purely nerve locks in your glutes. Nerve locks in your glutes can mimic hip bursitis pains. That's why when I release them and get rid of them, this pain either disappears completely or you actually have a hip bursa, bursa that's burning and angry and inflamed and you do need injections of cortisone steroids into there to help relieve and alleviate. A lot of people I meet have multiple injections already into the trunk enteric hip bursa and yet the pain is still there. So that's easy for my perspective, my treatment, because then nerve locks make it all go away and it's beautiful. So hip bursa is another diagnosis that you can get for this pain, but for some reason you get all the injections and it does not work. Therefore, the final answer to this video is nerve locks in your glutes and more specifically, glute minimus, glute medius, glute maximus, piriformis. Minimus, medius, maximus, piriformis, and I'll be specific on this in a moment when we go into treatment. The nervous system, inferior and superior gluteal nerves. All right, why I'm mentioning that? Going into now treatment, you've had a lot of treatment, manual therapies of all types. You've had injections for the hip bursa, possible injections elsewhere in your lumbar spine. It doesn't work. You do all the best exercises given to you by a practitioner. Uh, helps a little bit, but wow, still there. And it's frustrating. You try to exercise. You try to wake your glutes up. You're the best of the best with your exercises. You're really focusing on activating glutes. And yet, it either doesn't come on or uh, I can get to about 70% and it just hits a wall every time. It's so frustrating. I can't get past this barrier. I'm an athlete and I just can't do it. It frustrates me. Nerve locks again. It stops you. It's designed to stop you. Nerve locks, because of the trauma or multiple traumas, micro traumas, emotional and physical, remember emotional and physical, the nerve locks are designed to protect and preserve and it'll be there 28 years later. So that's why treatment, when you've tried everything and it's failing, even acupuncture, I love acupuncture. I don't personally do it, but I love acupuncture and it's failing. It's called nerve locks. I keep repeating this, but problem. A lot of you are not in Australia and many have asked, is this treatment available in the US, in Europe, London, South Africa, and so on? I'm so sorry, not as yet. I've only just recently finished all my data. We're nearly hitting about 100,000. I think we're over 100,000 officially now cases, clinical studies that I've done personally, assessing their journey from day dot and then how many treatments that I normally do, which is about two to three on average, and that's it. And then I watch and observe. Wow, it's taken me a very long time clinically watching everybody. Two weeks, two months, four months, a year, two years, even four years constantly assessing and reassessing, experimenting. Back to the anatomy labs I went many years ago, constantly studying the anatomy. I did not use any literature out there on Google or in the world because this was and is very new territory of treatment methodology. I created the nerve lock treatment called the Bostock Needle Technique. I've only just recently finished, I believe now, all the points that exist in everywhere in the body that gives me certainty with everything that I say and do and the results that I get, the prognosis that comes from releasing nerve locks. I'll do more of that in future videos, but for the sake of here, nerve locks, glute minimus, medius, maximus, piriformis. But if you are overseas and unable to obviously receive the nerve lock treatment because I'm based here in Brisbane, Australia, I am planning to travel. I do travel around Australia, but also overseas into the US, into Europe and so on in the near future. So stay posted on my channels. I may show up in your country, Canada as well, of course, one day, and I will provide treatments to people in those countries. So that's the uh, answer to so many questions. So I'm so sorry. Not as yet, but, 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 but in the meantime, dry needling for trigger points is the westernized version of acupuncture, the Chinese traditional method. Dry needling for trigger points has been around since the 1960s. It became more 
uh, prevalent, especially in Australia, in the Western world, in around 2000, early 2000, I feel. Uh, that's when I started to really pick it up and study it and practice it myself. I went to many courses and started practicing dry needling for trigger points. Trigger points is great. However, nerve locks is not trigger points. I'll repeat, nerve locks are not trigger points. But wherever you are in the world, if you can find a trusted practitioner for yourself to use trigger point dry needling to glute minimus, medius, maximus, and piriformis, try that out. Hopefully, intentionally or unintentionally, that person can release some of your nerve locks. They sit in a few areas in those muscles. I talked about the nervous system in those muscles. They sit close to trigger points, some a little away, but it can still help you progress a little more from where you are today. I hope that makes sense. Nerve locks is a completely different treatment. It's a different needle, a different needle thickness, the gauge is very different to trigger point or acupuncture dry needling. Acupuncture, sorry, or trigger point dry needling, sorry. The gauge is different. I personally use from gauge 0.3 to 0.5 and very different lengths in needles. And the nerve lock treatment is completely different points and different prognosis. So I don't want to get confused. And this is the Bostock needle technique. However, because you're so far away, Dry needling for trigger points, I will recommend in videos, future videos, dry needling for trigger points, I love, and try in these areas. So if you're a practitioner, or if you have your practitioner, you want to show them this video, try dry needling for trigger points to glute minimus, medius, maximus, and piriformis for your current hip pain issue, and I pray you'll get some luck. Another little cheeky one I'll add on top. L4, L5. There are trigger points that sit there too. If your person can find them, try that out also. It can really help progress you a bit further. All right, so treatment, that's simply it. When you've been medically cleared, MRI scans, CT scans, x-rays and so on, everything is clear and you're struggling and it's been months and years and years, medically sound, no cancers, no tumors, no significant medical conditions and your pain is still going. You've had multiple injections for uh, steroidal, cortisone, steroidal injections for your hip bursa and you're still not better, trigger points, dry needling. If you're away from Australia and you're not coming to Brisbane, I, I have many who fly into Brisbane, thank you very much to see me. But if you're unable, try trigger points for dry needling to those muscles I mentioned. I hope that helps. However, it is a nerve lock treatment, the boss lock needle technique that I designed that goes directly and resets and control alt deletes. Control, Alt, Deletes, Resets. So what this leads on to now is the exercises. When you said before, I can't feel the muscles come on. I can't get any benefit from exercise, stretching, trigger balling, foam rolling, gunning, all these areas. Why, why, why? Because nerve locks do not allow you to progress when they are really active. When you're in the early stages of your pain and problem, People go, yeah, I, will, I was able to manage it better, you know, stretching and really getting in there with massage and so on. It wasn't too bad. But that day when it really ignited into something monstrous, that's when the nerve locks, I say, became active or really peed off. <laughs> it really locked on and it's game on from there. It just stays and it progresses and it manifests and it adapts and it compensates and it just keeps growing in strength and intensity over the years. You learn to adapt with it, but the nerve locks grow in layers, as I say, and it really just debilitates your lifestyle. Many of you will relate to this. So when you are treating this with exercise, trigger balling, foam rolling, massage, any manual therapies, the key is keep it light, keep it pain-free-ish. No more than four out of 10 pain when you are treating this. No more than four out of 10 pain. I always say in my videos, try not to trigger ball it into too much pain. Try not to foam roll it, massage it, elbow it, bite it, stretch it aggressively. Keep it light and easy. That's the secret. Don't annoy the nerves more because they have already been annoyed for so long. Think of it like that. Two, when you're exercising for your glutes, and that is very important, you must try to wake your glutes up. But Jim, I try and it's not waking up. My suggestion is keep going. Think it's blood flow. Think it's circulation. Think I'm trying to activate the nerves. But here's the other key point again, like before, similar to before, 
no aggression, no high intensity, high load, high volume. You've got to bring everything down about 40% on average. Keep it light and easy. I'm sorry for the athletes out there. You want to push it harder and make it grow bigger. If your pain constantly comes on and stops you, you're hitting a brick wall anyway. I suggest keeping it light and you'll find the lighter loads, but good activations, you'll find the pain is much easier. I hope that helps. All the videos that I do, please look below. I did do a video after the viral one that went nuts about this hip pain. I did one after called how to help this pain. And in that video, I talk about exercises a bit more and how to do it for this pain. I didn't go through a lot of glute exercises for strengthening. I'll do that in a future video, but ex um, stretching and mobilizing this area with less pain, keep it controlled. Glute exercises. No, in fact, I did do a glute exercise routine on the blue mat. So look out for the video below on a blue mat where I talk about back pain, SIJ, hip pain, glute exercise. I did do one. I may put it up again in the near future to remind you. But exercising your glutes and strengthening, I understand it feels difficult to come on. You just won't feel it, but keep it active, keep it blood flow and keep the intensity low. The nerve locks need to disappear one day. That's the truth. The nerve locks do have to disappear. And when they do, it reconnects this with the central nervous system again. Your brain reconnects and it gives everyone, for example, who I treat, when I do it on day dot, I say now you have six to eight weeks. That window allows the nerves to come back to full function. It actually goes past that barrier and you move forward. You never regress. That's what I always say to people. You always move forward. This is what nerve locks do. When they disappear, the true nature of your problem always reveals itself. Everyone, thank you so much for your questions. If you have any issues or questions after this video, please comment or message me. I hope this summary, long as it is, helps you manage your hip pain better.